Riley Gaines takes issue with Biden's proposed Title IX changes. That's what we're going to be talking about on today's show. But I really want the theme of the show to be centered around all the unintended negative consequences from the left's radical movements in the past decade. And we all know that there is a ton of them. Four, just right off the top of my head, that have really done a lot of damage to this country. So that's what we're going to be talking about on today's show. So thank you for tuning in, and let's do this. You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show. Building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And you never know where Stephen may go. And now, here's Stephen. Former All-American swimmer Riley Gaines slammed ex-college swim champ Leah Thomas over the trans athlete's vocal stance on the Biden administration's proposed changes to Title IX. What's up, podcast listeners? Welcome to the show. That's going to be one of the movements that we talk about today. But like I said, I want the main focus to be on the overall consequences from the radical leftist movements in the past decade. And this is just the latest one um, that we've been experiencing. And it, it could be probably possibly the most damaging. It is just completely destroying women's sports right now, which is a shame since women fought so hard for so long to get to where they're at today and just to watch it get all destroyed in a few years is just extremely disheartening. So I have an article here from the New York Post dated April 18th, hat tip to David Proper. Biden, the 80-year-old Democrat, announced that his administration wants to establish that outright bans on transgender athletes would violate Title IX. However, schools that grab up federal dollars could still enact policies that limit transgender students' participation, specifically in high school and college sports. So Thomas, a transgender woman who swam for the women's swim team at the University of Pennsylvania, supported part of the new rule but said it was not enough in an Instagram video she posted Monday. So this is how it goes, folks. And you know, if you listen to the show for long, if you're an everyday listener, You know that one of my sayings is is if you give these people an inch, they'll take a mile. It's never enough, folks. And that is one of the reasons why conservatives and Republicans do not want to give up anything on the Second Amendment, because they know if you give these people an inch, it's not enough. And it never is. And it's always been that way. And this the, the latest movement in the transgender movement is just another example as to if you just give them what they want, it's never enough. They never stop. They always go way, way too far. So I'm going to go ahead and play the audio clip of Leah Thomas and what she had to say in that Instagram post. My name is Leah Thomas. I'm a transgender woman, a former college swimmer, and the first trans athlete to be named Division I NCAA champion. I started swimming when I was five years old. It has taught me so much. It has given me so many opportunities to learn, grow, develop, and connect with my peers. Opportunities that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't have access to athletics. That's why it breaks my heart to see trans kids across the country lose out on these opportunities. The Department of Education has proposed a new rule for Title IX regarding transgender athletes. This rule would prohibit blanket bans on transgender kids, especially in grades K through 8. However, it would not prohibit discrimination against trans kids in the high school and college levels under the guise of competitive fairness. This rule is a good start, however, it is not enough. During this time of intense anti-trans backlash, the trans community needs explicit protections from discrimination in order to live our lives freely and equally. Luckily, this rule is not final. We have a 30-day period to urge the Biden administration to amend the rule and grant equal protection for all transgender kids, because all trans kids deserve the opportunity to compete and play in the sports they love without compromising who they are. Join me in commenting on this proposed rule and demanding equal protection for all transgender athletes. All trans kids deserve the opportunity to be themselves and participate. Like I said, it is just so sad that we're, we are watching the destruction of women's sports right now by this fluke fad 
that has just popped up out of nowhere and will go away eventually. But it, look at all the damage it's going to cause to women's ath athletic records in just the short window that it's here. So, I, you know, are those women going to get their records back? So, for instance, like Riley Gaines, you know, she had her records crushed and, and Leah Thomas has been crushing records ever since he started swimming. So are all these women going to get their records back once it, you know, once all this insanity goes away down the road? Because we all know that's what's going to happen. Because look at all the other movements that's happened, folks. The BLM movement came and gone. The defund the police movement has came and gone. But the people are left in the wake of their damage. So it's not like it's the movement may move on, but the damage that it leaves behind remains for a very long time. And this is an example of that. The the records that are, are getting crushed right now, the swimming records, and not just from Leah Thomas, but all the males that are competing with women. I mean, the women's records are just getting crushed all over the place. So it's just sad that these women are going to lose their records that they wouldn't have if it wasn't for this this ridiculous, insane trans movement that is just spreading across the country and across the world like a cancer. So in in the audio, you heard you heard Leah Thomas say this rule is a good start. However, it is not enough. During this time of intense anti-trans backlash, the trans community needs explicit protection from discrimination in order to live our lives freely and equally, Thomas said. Her problem is, is that the rule would not prevent discrimination against trans kids at the high school and college levels under the guise of competitive fairness. She also said growing up swimming provided her with numerous opportunities, and it breaks my heart to see trans kids across the country lose out on these opportunities. Riley Gaines, who competed for the University of Kentucky and raced against Thomas, slammed the comments in a tweet she posted Tuesday. So Riley Gaines said this on Twitter, under the guise of competitive fairness, are you really trying to say you would have won a national title against the men? And then she went on to say, does it not break your heart to see women lose out on all these opportunities? Yeah, man, that is what everybody is missing. That is what that is what's suffering the most. And it's it goes completely unnoticed about all of this is, you know, we're it, it seems as if the trans movement, you know, the people in that movement are are losing sight of what's really important. They are not seeing the damage that they are causing to real women. You know, they're not seeing the damage being caused to real women's records and, and athletic records and the opportunities that are being destroyed by men. This is insane. OK, you have all the all the gains that women have made over the years is just being destroyed by men. It is so insane that this is being missed out of all this. The New York Post goes on to say the Biden admins proposed bill denies science, truth and common sense. Gaines also said that Thomas's take is selfish and shows an utter disregard for women. The Biden administration is actively and aggressively working to pass laws that erase decent and fair treatment for women in sports. Thomas previously competed for the men's swim team at UPenn before she swam for the women's team in her senior year of college. Thomas dominated the field and was the first trans athlete to be named division NCAA champion. Gaines also displayed excellence swimming to several All-American titles and conference championships for Kentucky. It's just so sad, man, that the obvious – this is almost like a mockery of women. It, I mean it's it just comes in and that's just like with the Nick Mulvaney or uh, whatever his name is, the, the, bet, the Bud Light fiasco that we're going through right now. Like this transgender – Again, just like all the other movements are causing so much damage to our culture and so much damage to our society and our country as a whole. And what sucks is 10 years from now when this comes and goes, when this fad, this this movement or whatever it is, this, this social contagion, when it goes away, all this damage is still going to remain. You know, so it's not like all this is just for for fun. You know, it's not like it's not like it's no harm, no foul. No, there's a lot of harm being done right here, and it's just sad that we have to fight for this kind of thing, and it makes you really wonder 
what this country would look like and what our culture would look like if the leftist Democrats got everything they wanted. That is extremely terrifying if you really think about it. Well, they're not getting this, folks. They are not. OK, so men are starting to stand up. This is really starting to make an impact. The, the complete disregard for truth and science on this entire issue is really starting to come out to light because – the leftist science is really – their their argument is starting to fall apart because it's just an unarguable fad, folks. It's it's not – because it's not something that you can argue, OK? This entire thing defies science. It defies truth. There, it, it doesn't exist. When you're talking about men competing against women, all the arguments just go go lay to waste once you start getting into the details and once you start getting into the numbers. And so the reason why I say I think it's really starting to catch on and I believe – now I'm just going off what I've been reading and what I've been researching. I believe the tide is starting to turn here. So the reason I say that is because the other day on the Bill Maher show, you had Katie Porter and Pierce Morgan and they were talking about this subject and and Riley Gaines and they were talking about this entire feud between Riley Gaines and Leah Thomas and this and I want you guys to listen to that audio clip because it does it does you know Pierce Morgan you know the guy I don't really care for the guy I I just don't so but he does make excellent points once in a while. He's a big anti-gun advocate, so I don't like him for that. But once in a while, these people make sense. People like Bill Maher, people like Pierce Morgan, you know, they once in a while they do make sense on some stuff. And he absolutely wrecks Katie Porter here. And and she was just completely shocked and didn't know what to say. So here, check this out. Nobody including Riley Gaines, who I disagree with strongly, should be should What do you disagree with out of interest? Um, I I think that it should be up to sporting bodies to make the decisions about who but and what how she should What has she said compete. that's actually wrong? I think that what she has done is try to turn this. We talked about people, you know, becoming using things to kind of get likes and get clicks. That's not what she's doing. It's I mean, not? I, I've got no truck for right Riley Gaines personally, but all I've seen her do is stand up for women's rights to fairness and equality. She, she, has she, she actually competed oh. against Leah Thomas, and it was obviously unfair. Leah Thomas won one of the races in the NCAA championships by 50 seconds against a bunch of biological females who simply couldn't keep up. That cannot be right. It cannot be fair. That is something that I trust, I think our sporting bodies should be dealing with. And by the way, Riley is speaking up for herself, and that is her prerogative, and I respect her free speech. I think she's speaking up for pretty much every female athlete in the world. I think. I mean, wasn't that wasn't that the point of Title IX? Title IX in the early seventies was yeah. something that was a, it was a major event in feminism that we finally have this law that says at colleges, right, and I think high schools too, but definitely colleges, women women's sports have to be given equal to men's sports so that women aren't get you know. And this led to the WNBA and lots of other stuff. This seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to be so many instances I think where wokeness is the opposite of what. I grew up as liberalism. Right. Liberalism was let's give the women an equal shot. And meanwhile, this is, let, let's and meanwhile, put a male in the, mm-hmm. in the swimming pool right, with the women. I don't get it. It's exactly. crazy. And meanwhile, trans people who genuinely want to compete at athletics and swimming or whatever it may be, they, they're the ones who are suffering here. They need to be found a way to compete fairly and justly. Well, what's your answer then? I think there's one or two answers. I think they either compete against their biological sex, as many of them did before, or you create an entirely new category for a transgender athlete. And then they're able to compete fairly. But what you cannot do is continue to allow more and more trans athletes to start decimating women's records, in some cases, irrevocably. Yep. I couldn't have said it better myself, folks. I mean, it is absolutely insane that we are allowing this to happen. And these people, these leftist Democrats, these these. They're not even liberals, folks. They're not even liberals. As much as I don't agree with Bill Maher on a ton of stuff, he actually made sense there when he said wokeism is like the opposite of everything I grew up with. And that's exactly what it is. It's like 
they just whatever the status quo is, they just want to do the opposite. And, and, and that's why it seems so purposeful it, because it is purposeful. It's like if if men compete against men, that's great. Women compete against women. You know, that took a while to get. That was an absolute that was that took a while to get. And then now it's like these people have no meaning in their life. They want to give their life purpose and meaning. So they wake up every day trying to figure out ways to give themselves meaning and purpose in life. And what do they do? They say, you know what? I want to put men in women's sports. Transgenders should have rights. It's like they all want to be – it's like they all want to be a part of something. They all want to be a part of this this movement, and, and everybody has to be part of a movement. So they wake up, and they're like, hmm, what am I going to do today? I want to do something meaningful. I want to make a difference. That's what they do. They can't just accept that men compete with men and women compete with women because they're biologically different. No, they have to they just they always have to be part of this it's this wokeness. It is it is a religion, folks. I am not joking when I say that. I am not being hyperbolic. It is absolutely a religion. Some people wake up and they pray. Some people pray before they go to bed. These people try and figure out ways to give their life meaning by being woke, by figuring out how to give transgender people, how to get trans men into women's sports. OK, and how to how to figure out ways to to defund the police and get rid of police and figure out ways to save the planet by changing the climate. That's what this is, folks. And just like G.K. Chesterton said, those who don't believe in God, it's not that they don't believe in nothing. It's actually much worse. It's that they'll believe in anything. And that's exactly what we're going through now with all these movements, all these different radical movements we're witnessing from the left, from the Democrat Party. Is It's these people that believe they have replaced God with this new woke religion, whether it's climate change that they, they worship, whether they worship this transgender movement, whether they worship BLM or whether they worship whatever whatever it is. They'll believe in anything. They'll worship anything. And right now, it's this transgender movement. So every night before they go to bed, instead of praying, they think of ways to make a difference. They think of ways to give their life meaning and purpose. So that's exactly what we're experiencing here, and it's just sad. And in the end of that audio clip, you hear Pierce Morgan talking about how bad – Leah Thomas crushed Riley Gaines' record and it, by like 50 seconds or something crazy. Well, that's not that's not the only record that Leah Thomas has smashed, okay? So I have an article here from the Swimming World magazine. In this article, it talks about just how much of an advantage did Leah Thomas possess over biological females. The numbers paint a clear picture. The fact that the University of Pennsylvania swimmer soared from a mid 500s ranking in the 200 freestyle in all divisions in the in the men's competition to one of the top ranked swimmers in women's competitions tells the story of the unfairness which unfolded at the NCAA level. In her final meet, Thomas finaled in three events at the NCAA championships. Highlighted by a victory in the 500 freestyle, although she didn't contest the event at the NCAA champs, Thomas had one of the country's top times in the 1650 freestyle. Here's a look at her performances throughout the season, including her comparative status to her times as a member of the Penn Men squad. So in the 500 freestyle, Thomas timed at 4 minutes and 33 seconds from her, from her NCAA title swim handed her the fastest time in the nation by more than a second over Arizona State's Emma Norton with a time of 4 minutes and 34 seconds. Additionally, Thomas's difference from her personal best with the Penn men's program was just 6%. And, and that's just one. That's just one championship. So this guy, this dude, is going around absolutely decimating all the women's records in swimming. It's actually quite sad, folks. It's extremely sad. So to get back to the New York Post article... It's almost done here. So Thomas previously competed for the men's swim team at UPenn before she swam for the women's team in her senior year of college. Thomas dominated the field and was the first trans athlete to be named division NCAA champion. Gaines also displayed excellence, swimming to several All-American titles and conference championships for Kentucky. Biden's proposal makes it harder for schools to prohibit a transgender girl in elementary school, but would leave room for schools to stop trans athletes from joining teams on more competitive sports to avoid sports-related injuries and ensure fairness. The potential rule still faces a lengthy approval process. But the fact remains, folks, that 
we are sitting here watching this new transgender movement. This we're sitting here watching this transgender movement just absolutely decimate these women's records. And it's extremely sad. And I say once they get this fixed, you know, once and I'm right there with Pierce Morgan. I'm like, if you want transgenders to compete in athletics, then they need to have their own their own. A division. They need to have their own sports division, man. You can't have men competing against women. First of all, it's extremely unfair. And second of all, it just it's just it reinforces this weird social contagion we're dealing with right now. And there's no doubt that it's a social contagion. I mean, we all know this because I mean, this was, you know, transgenders were always around. But not like this. We are seeing our entire country be submerged in this transgender ideology right now. So, you know, I, I just hate to see that down the road when this all gets figured out, that all these women that got their, their records crushed by men don't get their records back. I, I think that needs I think people need to go back on that and figure out who lost their record to men and give their records back and take the records from the men. OK, if you're going to compete, you need to compete with men. OK, if you're a woman, you need to compete with women. It's that simple. I mean, this is this is so simple. That's what makes this so ridiculous. OK, it makes it so ridiculous. That's why Katie Porter was completely speechless with Pierce Morgan on that stage, because she just couldn't argue. You can't argue against this, folks. It's dumb. OK, nobody's saying that we need to ban transgenders from anything. But you, you you just this is about fairness and you're sitting here allowing men to strip titles from women. I mean, how freaking sexist is that? Where's all the feminists out there? Where's all the women that fought so hard all these years for this to have the rights to have all the advantages that they have now? It, it just sucks, man. So and and that's just one of the movements that we're talking about. But, you know, there's look at all the other movements with the climate change movement. That's a that's a that's a whole new movement that is destroying things as we speak with the with the climate change activism and, and the windmills being made in China, the solar panels being made in China, the the lithium batteries being made in China, all these uh, all these movements that the Democrats have always have extreme unintended consequences okay like they have and they don't even realize it until the damage is done and then the leftists will go on to the next movement they're like okay yeah that one sucked it didn't really work and it kind of damaged a lot of stuff but now we can go on to this movement you know the next is going to be the pedophilia movement i'm telling you folks that's next that's what all this is leading to this marxist movement it's all leading to 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 marxism and and the next is going to be pedophilia we're going to start seeing the normalization of pedophilia or the attempted normalization of pedophilia that's going to happen I, I guarantee it, folks. I guarantee it. I can see exactly where this is going. So that is just a shame that we have to sit and watch this. So I have one more article, though, from Matt Margolis over there at PJ Media. It's pretty good, and I think this guy absolutely nails it. Matt Margolis is probably one of the best journalists over there at, at, at PJ Media. Okay, in an Instagram video published on Monday, Will Leah Thomas called for additional safeguards in President Joe Biden's new Title IX proposal to allow bi biological males to compete on women's sports teams while dismissing concerns about fairness to real girls and women as a ruse. But his case for expanding Biden's Title IX rules is based on a lie. So during the 2021 and 2022 academic year, Thomas participated on the University of Pennsylvania women's swim team. He had previously competed on the men's team, though he was not a stellar competitor. After identifying as a woman, Thomas became an overnight success on the women's team winning several championship titles, often with a significant lead. However, his success came at the expense of female athletes who lacked the physical strength of biologically male competitors like Thomas, all while being supported by the NCAA. That's why it breaks my heart to see trans kids across the country lose out on these opportunities, Leah Thomas said. The Department of Education has proposed a new rule for Title IX regarding transgender athletes. This rule would prohibit blanket bans on transgender kids, especially in grades K-8. through However, it would not prohibit discrimination against trans kids in the high school and co college levels under the guise of competitive fairness. So Thomas says the proposed Biden rule is a, quote, good start but insists that it is not enough, and it claims the trans community 
community needs explicit protections for discrimination. Let's make one thing very clear. Thomas is lying. He argues that access to athletics gave him opportunities and that he doesn't want to see others lose out on those opportunities. But nobody is telling kids with gender dysphoria they cannot compete in sports. It's just not happening. The issue here isn't that kids aren't being allowed to participate. It's a question of what teams they participate on. The language being used by Thomas here is deliberately deceptive and inflammatory, and he's not the only one doing it. Yeah, so you guys have noticed in that Twitter clip, that audio clip, it was that was scripted. He was reading from somewhere. The video was obviously edited. So, I mean, this is a movement, folks. This is this is somebody is behind the scenes pushing this movement. And just like Matt Margola said here, it was a lie. And also, like Matt said, is he's not the only one doing it. So Megan Rapinoe and other women athletes recently wrote a letter to Congress expressing their opposition to the Protection of Girls and Women in Sports Act by falsely claiming that it would prohibit transgender and intersex girls and women from participating in sports. It does no such thing. It prohibits school athletic programs from allowing individuals whose biological sex at birth was male to participate in programs that are for women or girls. There's nothing unfair about that. It's a fact that male athletes have some major physical and biological advantages over women. They're usually taller and have more muscle mass and stronger bones, among other differences. That's just biology, and it gives male athletes a serious edge in sports. This advantage doesn't disappear when they decide to identify as a woman, and it's not fair to pretend that it does. Yeah, that's essentially what all this is, folks. All this is like a big game of pretend. And not only do they pretend, okay, but what's even worse is when they expect us to go into their pretend world. I don't want to be in their cult, folks. I don't want to be in their pretend world, okay? Obviously, their world is very weird. I, I don't think the country's systematically racist. I don't think men can be women and women can be men, okay? I don't think, you know, cutting healthy private parts off of boys and girls and healthy breasts off of girls is a good idea. I think all this is insane. OK, and the fact that we're normalizing it makes it even more insane. You know, any other time in our nation's history, any other time, if this was 50 years ago, this insanity would have got slapped down like it was nothing. We wouldn't even be here right now having this discussion. But because of things like social media, this small fringe group of people, these radicals, are, you know, even though they're small in numbers, they're really loud and they're making big movements and all this stuff. So that is why we're having to deal with this. And if we don't deal with it, folks, it's going to get worse. So we have to take care of this now. All right. Or else, the, you know, this this is going to completely destroy women's sports. And, and and there will be no such thing as male and female sports. OK, well, there will be men's sports because you're not going to be seeing women trying to go compete in men's sports. It's just not going to happen. For some reason, it's always men competing in women's sports. It, and it always seems that those men go to women's sports after they were subpar in the men's competitions. So I, we all see what's going on here, folks. You know, these men that are claiming to be women so that they can compete in women's sports and get trophies and get records and smash women's records, real women's records – they're making a mockery of women all over the world. It's it's disgusting and it's disgraceful and it's a giant lie for one. And I don't want to be any part of that. Matt goes on and says, Thomas wasn't that great on the men's swim team. But once he joined the women's team, he started crushing it and winning national championships. But in doing so, he took opportunities away from female athletes who didn't have his biological advantages. Now he's trying to enable more men to follow in his footsteps by claiming that trans athletes are being shut out of sports when they are not. Asking biological males to compete against biological males isn't denying them opportunities. It's acknowledging physical and biological reality. Don't fall for the fake rhetoric. Yes, th this is what they're trying to do. Like, it, like this is not a issue, folks. Like nobody has ever had a problem saying a man is a man and a woman's and a, a, a woman is a woman. But now all of a sudden it's a big issue. I'm so tired of the Democrat leftists dragging this country and its people through these insane movements with all the movements with the BLM, the defund the police movement. Look how much damage the defund the police movement has. So speaking of movements, look at the defund the police movement and how much damage that has caused 
all these blue cities and all these blue states that essentially started defunding their police because of the leftist radicals movements. Absolute destruction. And the other day, I think it was two days ago, a few days ago, you had Republicans in New York doing a essentially like a field briefing in New York City where they go and they let they allowed these victims of homicide. They allow the family members to speak out and essentially say, yo, look, you guys aren't doing your job here. And I actually have an audio clip from a mother that was at that field briefing. And it's a little long, but I, you, I, I didn't edit it. I wanted you guys to hear the entire thing because you need to hear this woman. She makes so much sense. And it's just so sad that the state of New York and New York City is having to suffer through yet another one of the Democrat leftists' insane radical ideas. So here, listen to this. I am the chairwoman of Victims' Rights Reform Council. I'm also the mother of a homicide victim. My son, Sergeant Hassan Korea, Afghanistan war, retired veteran, was killed in Harlem in 2018. Hassan was kicked, punched, stomped, and stabbed nine times by four individuals he did not know, nor had he done them any harm. All four of these individuals were apprehended and all four charged with first degree gang assault and second degree murder. This case just resolved this year. So this case drug on through the Manhattan criminal court system for four and a half years. When Alvin Bragg came into office, he was held, he was handed a strong trial ready murder case and gang assault case against all four of these individuals where this brutal, savage homicide was captured on video. He was handed a strong trial ready case, ready to go to trial. As soon as he took office, the case immediately began to unravel. He dismissed, completely dismissed gang assault and murder indictments against two of the defendants clearly on video participating in the brutal savage slaughter of my son. Mary Saunders, the sister involved in the homicide. He dismissed her indictment and recharged her with assault with a shoe and sentenced her to one year time served. Travis Stewart dismissed his gang assault and murder indictment and sentenced him to attempted gang assault. And he pled guilty and sentenced him to seven years. Travis will be out in the next 18 months. Mary Saunders, the savage, is currently walking the streets of Harlem like she didn't just participate in the, in the brutal slaughter of another human being. Home with her family. Home with her children. If that's not a threat, uh, if that's not a threat to public safety, I don't know what is. She's capable at any moment of snapping and attacking someone and holding them while someone else plunges a butcher knife into their body nine times and another person 12 times and then run away and leave their body in the street to bleed to death. This is the type of criminal element that we have walking the streets of New York City on a daily basis. All types of criminal elements, free to do what they want, when they want, however they want, to whomever they want, with no consequences, no deterrence. We have these anti-gang violence, these credible messenger, millions and billions of our hard-earned tax dollars are going to fund these organizations that are doing absolutely nothing to deter this crime. They're doing absolutely nothing. And I propose another, not another dime of our federal tax dollars be pumped into these organizations until they can produce some measurable outcomes of effectiveness of what they're doing with our tax dollars to protect the public. Audience, there is no audience participation. Ms. Bram, you keep going. And as far as the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, if he's receiving one penny of federal dollars, you need to pull that funding until he starts doing his damn job and prosecuting crime. I was totally disrespected. Me, my family, my grandchildren, we were treated like garbage. Like garbage. I've sat for four and a half years and saw mothers walk in and out. We have a mother sitting here right now whose son, two sons, one died and the other one is on a colonoscopy bag. This is out of Darcel Clark's jurisdiction. So I'm not the only one. There are hundreds and thousands of us. We don't give a damn about your politics. We don't care. It could be the man from the moon who's running for president. Okay? As long as whoever's in there, it stands for law and order and is going to return some civility and sanity to our city. Thank you.
man, that woman was dead on. And like I said, it's not just these people that, you know, they they get these movements and then when they fail and they cause all this damage, they just move on to the next movement. But it's the rest of the country that has to that has to deal with all the, the unintended consequences. So, you know, all the people that didn't want to defund the police, like I'm sure this woman and I'm probably sure her son. You know, they have to suffer. It's them that are suffering, just like all the store owners that are being rioted and looted and burned to the ground. You know, they're the ones that have to suffer. It's like all these radical leftists that start these movements and and push these movements, they, they, they don't have to suffer at all. They contribute nothing to society. It's like they come in like a human freaking wrecking ball and then they just they leave. After all the damage is done and the American people are left having to clean up the mess. And that's exactly what happens with every single one of these movements. And the climate change movement, I have to say, if if the transgender movement is not the worst, I have to say the, cl- the climate change movement, this massive movement essentially trying to abolish fossil fuels is what they're trying to do. If this isn't probably one of the most damaging movements we've ever experienced in human history, then I don't know what is. Because the if you listen to one of my previous episodes back, way back, um, we talked about all the unintended consequences from from the climate change movement and how all these materials and all these resources all come from China. You know, like the lithium and the lithium brine and and the 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 silica for the solar panels and the steel for the windmills that come from China. All this stuff comes from China for one. And number two, the resources are finite. It's not like it's not like all these green uh, energy options are just made out of thin air. Everything is made from resources that are just as rare and if not rarer than fossil fuel. So it's like, OK, now you're just switching from crude oil to now you're going to lithium or cobalt or copper or aluminum. So it's like it's just replacing one thing for another. It's not actually a solution to the problem. The only thing this climate change stuff does is it just adds another variable into the equation. OK, it's not a solution at all. And all it does is it makes it more complicated to try and figure out. And really, there's no need. OK, if the Democrats and these leftists, you know, these these radical leftists would just allow the, the natural evolution of innovation then we wouldn't need windmills. We wouldn't need all that stuff would come naturally. And just like, and I, I hate to say it because I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm self-praising, but I did an episode on how scientists have created a man-made star here on earth, which will essentially, you know, have unlimited power, unlimited sources of energy that, that scientists have essentially just discovered. But they were trying to figure out if it would work. So essentially what it is, they're, they made a man-made star. So this source of energy, this, this production method, releases more energy than it takes in. So if you guys are familiar with how energy works and, and the physics behind energy production is – so say coal power plant. So you have to take coal. You have to burn it. And then the energy that comes off the burning of that coal is what produces the electricity, obviously through like through boilers and whatnot, steam, uh, turning steam turbines. So regardless, you know, it takes more energy than it actually outputs. But this this production method, this fission method that scientists have just discovered, which, like I said, is essentially a man-made star, it produces more energy than it actually takes going in. So that is an amazing feat. That is an amazing discovery. Something so it's like if people would just allow and I guarantee you if that if those scientists were forced into those labs, if those scientists were forced to come up with these ideas, it just wouldn't happen. Does anyone ever see anything good come from the United States government? Anything anything innovative? No. The United States government is a slow wasteful, bloated, ineffective, and inefficient 
So instead, if these people would just allow the natural evolution of innovation, then we would be there. Your car today is a lot more fuel efficient than it was 10 years ago. And 10 years from now, it's going to be even more fuel efficient. So there's no need for this massive push for renewable energy. Okay, we're we're doing just fine. But what's happening is because of their pushing, you know, because the innovation isn't natural, you're causing other problems. So you're going to be causing lithium shortages. You're going to be causing copper shortages. You're going to be causing strain on a on an electrical grid, an electrical grid that just isn't there, folks. Over and over and over again, that we've been told that the electrical grid cannot handle all these electric vehicles that the Biden administration is forcing onto the public. And when people say, oh, they're not forcing it, they are, folks, okay, because they're purposely increasing the, the cost of fuel, okay? They're, they're purposely increasing the cost of gas to incentivize people to buy electric cars. They, they are forcing it onto people, and, and that's not good. By forcing people to get off of gas stoves, you know, you have this gas stove being banned uh, all across the country, this gas stove ban. So what do people do? They have to go out and buy electric stoves, okay? And the and the gas powered mowers in California, you can't have any gas powered uh, lawn mowers. And same thing for the combustion engine. You know, this administration is always bragging about how it wants to be completely off fossil fuels and the combustion engine by 2030. They want to ban the combustion engine, folks. How dumb is that? I mean, this is the stuff. When you force this, when you have a government entity. That is forcing innovation onto the people and forcing innovation onto a country. You are going to have a lot of negative, unintended consequences, and that's exactly what we're feeling right now. This administration does nothing but impact the country with their unintended consequences. So that was that's what I wanted the theme of the show to be about today. I wanted I wanted the overall theme. I wanted the central theme to be around. All the unintended consequences that come from the Democrat Party and the radical leftist movements over the past decade. And um, I assure you folks, once we finish with one, it's going to be right into another one. And it just never stops. Why? Because the Democrat Party needs these types of boogeymans. The Democrat Party needs these type of emotions to get voters. OK, so they'll they'll purposely they'll purposely bring on these types of problems so that they can say, you know, so so that they could say, hey, vote for us and we'll ban gas stoves. Vote for us and we'll change the climate on planet Earth as if they can actually do it. The, whole, the entire idea of changing the climate on a planet is just as dumb as allowing men to compete in women's sports. All these movements are just dumb. Whose idea was it to defund police as if police aren't needed? And now look at all the damage that's being done to blue cities and states around the country. Massive crime spikes. People are, people are dying, folks, because of these movements. So it's not like these movements don't have any harm to people. I would say the defund the police movement has has the most direct harm on the people because now people are dying because these cops are leaving. They're being purposely demoralized, you know, and that was what they wanted. This was all done by the Democrat Party. This was all done by the radical leftists' ideas, and then the Democratic Party pushes those ideas because they want voters. So it's like the Democrat Party is just waiting for the radical leftists to come up with another movement, and then the Democrat Party will jump on that movement and say, hey, vote for us if you want it. You know, it's just it's just one thing after another after another. And it's just unfortunate that people are out there dying because of the Democrat Party's movements that they're that they're forcing onto the nation. And if you think that is bad, you wait till this this whole this whole plan to ban fossil fuels. Wait till that starts really hurting people. We're already starting to see the effects of that. I read an article about how you have to process 500,000 pounds of earth just to get 1,000 pound battery, 1,000 pound lithium battery. You know, by the time you get the cobalt and the copper and the silica, and that's just for one battery, folks. And guess what? All these renewable resources are non-recyclable. They cannot be recycled. So like solar panels can't be recycled. And even if they can, you know, they'll claim they can be recycled, but no company's going to do it because it's completely unprofitable. It takes so much energy to do it and you get so little out, you know, that's usable that it's not even worth doing. 
So imagine that when you see these giant fields of solar panels, every single one of those solar panels are going to have to be replaced in 20 years and you cannot recycle them, folks. So like I said, you're just replacing one problem with another. That is all it is. And these people can never get to that point. They never ask the question, well, what happens in 20 years when I have to replace all these solar panels? They never ask the question because they don't know. These people don't know anything. They don't know anything about anything. All they do is they feel an emotion, they act on it, and then they push it and force it onto the others. Okay? All they do is force their will upon others. That is it. Like a bunch of Marxists, man. Okay? And, th and that is exactly what we're talking about. So again, like the lithium brine. The lithium brine, you have to – that is such a nasty, nasty chemical mess. And same thing for drawing out all the, all the minerals – from things like cobalt. You know, all these things take thousands of gallons of chemicals that you can't, you have nowhere to put. So, you know what? If the Democrats really took energy production serious and they really wanted a clean source of energy, then they would be talking about nuclear. Okay. Because that is by far the most efficient means of creating electricity that mankind has ever discovered. And yet the Democrats want to ban all of it. You see what I mean, folks? Their ideas are just dumb. They're dumb ideas, and they're extremely damaging. You have Germany that, that just had to fire up all of its coal plants running at maximum capacity because they shut down their nuclear power plants. And so how much more CO2 or how much more carbon did you put into the environment starting up those cold fire plants at 100% capacity than you would have just leaving your nuclear plant alone? They just don't know anything, folks. Everything they do is off of emotion. They, they, are, they act off complete emotion all the time. And their, and their emotions are just radical and nonsensical most of the time. So I have always said that this wokeness ideology that we're experiencing, it is a religion, folks. It is 100% a religion. And since these people don't believe or worship God, they just worship anything that comes along. So whether it's transgenderism or whether it's defund the police or whether it's BLM or whether it's climate change, that whatever it is, and just like G.K. Chesterton said, it's not that they don't believe in nothing. It's that they believe in anything. And that is the issue we are facing here, folks. These people will believe in anything. And once they believe in it, they just push it and push it and push it onto people and they push their will onto everyone else until they get their way, not realizing all the damage that they're causing to society and to culture. So you can you can correlate it. You could say that they're doing it on purpose and which may be the case. I actually think they are doing it on purpose because they want to rebuild from the ashes their perfect Marxist utopia. But if they're not, surely not all of them know what they're doing. Surely some of them have to realize that what they're doing is bad, right? Like, you, you know, when you sit there, but the problem is, is they're just not informed. They never ask these questions. They never ask themselves the question, and then what? So when you tell these people, yeah, did you know you have to dig up 500,000 pounds of earth to get 1,000 pound battery for an electric vehicle? They're shocked. They didn't know that. But once you go through and all the facts, and even now, with the studies that they have done, they think electric vehicles are, are just completely environmentally friendly. These electric vehicles are not environmentally friendly. They are not. And you can read study after study that proves that. You have to have an electric vehicle for like 30 years for in, in order for it to be um, the, a comparison to a gas-powered vehicle. So it's like, what are we doing? Is there any electrical vehicle out there? Is there any battery powered vehicle out there that is going to last 30 years? No. So what happens is you have to replace the battery, which means you have to get another thousand pound battery once every 10 years or 15 years. And, and that's going to be twice as much damage you're doing to the environment. So that now that's a million pounds of earth you've had to dig up to get all the resources needed for that battery. And that's just one vehicle, folks. We don't even know what kind of damage is going to be caused by all these electric vehicles being made, all the, the non-renewable 
resources that are being used to put in these batteries, to put in these electric vehicles like copper and aluminum and cobalt and and silica, all this stuff that's required to make these electrical ve- these electric vehicles and the leftists the people these these stupid people drive around in them like the electricity is coming out of thin air it's like they just don't get it folks they do not get it when you ask them hey where did the electricity come from that's powering your battery in your car they don't know they really don't know because if they actually thought about it folks they would realize that yeah it's really no difference I'm probably better off just driving my gas-powered car that gets 40 miles per gallon versus a an electric car that I have to charge every other day, and the electricity comes from a coal-powered plant or a liquid natural gas plant. They just don't think about it, folks. They never do, and it just it's just a shame that we all have to live through their stupidity, man. It's just a shame. So that's what I wanted to talk about on today's show. I hope I got the message out there clear enough. I wanted to touch down on this Leah Thomas thing, this transgender and women's sports and the massive amount of damage that's going to happen if this Title IX, uh, this proposed Title IX change happens. And it's just a shame, folks. You know, I, I hate the fact that we're sitting here watching women's sports be completely destroyed by men. So it's a man that is making the changes and it's men that are actually going to be competing and destroying the women's sports. It's just a shame. A shame. Where, where are all the feminists, you feminists out there? If you're listening to this, you are watching your sports be completely destroyed. Everything you worked so hard for over the years is being destroyed and is, and I have no idea why, but there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel with Pierce Morgan and Katie Porter, you know, with Pierce Morgan, absolutely wrecking Katie Porter on Bill Maher. And just by saying the truth, that is it. All he had to say was just the basic truth. Just tell the truth. And Katie Porter had nothing to say because their ideas are dumb, folks. And just the little bit of factual information completely destroys their entire argument. So, you know, it's it does look like there's some light coming at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully it's not a train. But I do see this actually going by the wayside very soon. It looks like the tides are changing on this. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to I don't think the changes are going to happen before irreparable damage is done. So, you know, like Title IX changes. So you have this tyrant, this this guy, Joe Biden, that thinks he's an emperor, you know, making all these changes, spending all this money like he's like he's king of the United States. And he's he doesn't realize this old fool doesn't realize what he's doing. He doesn't know. OK, I feel like. I feel like Joe Biden is like the old guy all the high schoolers use to party at his house and drink all his booze. And then as they're drinking all his booze, they're they're making fun of him behind his back. Like that's what I feel like Joe Biden is. And that's and that's exactly the results we're getting. That's exactly the kind of results we're seeing. And so hopefully this old fool doesn't completely destroy Title IX and women's sports while in his short little time in office. It's just I I really hope not, folks. I hope not. So feminists out there, you need to get on this. Get with Riley Gaines. You you know, get a hold of her on Twitter and see how you can help. I I think she's she's touring around with uh, Turning Point USA and she's going to university to university to university. She was actually supposed to be in dental school right now and, and to be a dentist. But she's skipping on that to – she said she has some more important things to take care of, and that is saving women's athletics. And I agree with her. So hopefully she – hopefully she she's able to do that because I don't – I really don't want to witness the fall of women's sports right now. OK? So that would just be a tragedy. So that's all I got for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys want to ask any questions or you you want to you want to share some any information with me, you want to share any information with me, you want a topic that you want me to look into, you can get a hold of me at stephentoryellowshow at gmail.com. And also I have the videos uploaded on YouTube now. So you can go to YouTube. That is youtube.com slash at Stephen Toriello Show. And obviously, like always, you can always get the videos on Rumble and uh you guys have some cool stuff to say in an email you got any questions if you want me to read them on the show i can do that too you can contact me again the email address is steven toriello show at gmail.com and also the website is still in the works we're still getting there i am essentially on every single social media platform we're on facebook twitter 
True Social, TikTok. We're on all of them, folks. All the social medias uh, you can you can find the show on. So make sure you share the show with your friends and family. That really helps. Also, folks, it would really help out if you just – when you share the show with your friends or family, tell them to follow the show. So tell them to follow. It's completely free. It doesn't cost anything, and it really helps my numbers out. So it, it helps me, and by by following the show, it spreads the word. It beats the algorithm. It puts the show in the algorithm, and the algorithm throws the show around more the more followers you have. So listening is great. That is awesome. And uh, I know all my all my hardcore listeners, I know you guys probably followed the show already. But whenever you share the show with your friends or family, just tell them to follow the show too. And uh, we're getting serious now, folks. We're getting there. We're getting there. And uh, once we get the website, that's going to be even greater. That's going to be really cool. So again, thank you guys for listening to the show. Thank you for tuning in. And I want you guys to have a great day. Have a great week. God bless you and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.